Hi, yeah, welcome. And uh, I'm going to take you through the student portal and the digital portal. So my name is Victor Luganu Sambuli, an alumni of KMO class of 2015. And uh, generally I'm going to explain to you about the student portal and uh, the digital campus portal so that you're able to understand those two portals, the differences and how you're going to interact with them especially since you're new students and uh, what is also required of you to do from January because a number of things we've done for you between now September and December but come January uh, going forward there are things that will be your sole responsibility as a student to do so that we're able to assist you from our end. So we are going to begin with the KMO student portal and uh, the link for that is portal2.kmo.se.ke and uh, we're going to discuss in three phases. The first phase generally is the introduction of the student portal. The second phase is the trimester registration and becoming an active student. And the last phase, generally interacting with the portal so that you're able to see practically what you're supposed to do as a new student going forward. So introduction. So for introduction, the KMO student portal is an online gateway where you as a KMO student can log into our university system and be able to do the following. The first thing is do session reporting. The second thing, registration of units on offer. And I'm going to show you how to get the units on offer. Then view your bio data. Then view your school fee statement university announcements so any announcement that you're going to receive uh, from the office of the registrar and also from the, the university as a whole you're going to be able to view it in the student portal also there are some announcements made in the digital portal and also some announcements are usually posted in our facebook page and the university websites and various platforms including the telegram then you're able to get exam clearance cards uh, and this one is what you do when you're physically here, but due to the current pandemic, the clearance and most of the things you saw, we are doing them online. So you're going to also do your clearance using online portals, but should we come physically, there's a process that usually takes place when you want to sit for an exam every end of the trimester. Then you're able to view academic performance and transcripts, and I'll also show you that. And you're able to access document repository and this way you access various forms that you are used in uh, doing various things uh, like changing uh, their mode of study changing transferring campuses changing of programs and what have you and also clearing when you finished your studies within the institution so as a new student between september and december we have done most of the process for you that is uh, session reporting unit registration, approval, and upload of the materials via the digital campus. But from January, you are going, January 2021, you're going to be continuing students. And every trimester going forward, these are the steps that you, shall, you are supposed to do. So the first general thing, you have to log into the system. And logging into the system, you're supposed to use your username and your registration number. Then there's an assigned password and there's a default password that was assigned to all of you but you are supposed to change it to something that you can remember and then something that is secure from your side so that no one can access your portal using your registration number and the default password so your registration number comes in different parts uh, i know a number of you have seen either you have bus your colleagues are cou another one as cis another one as bms so the registration number, the first one is usually the course, the three characters. Then the second is the level of study. Then the middle number is your unique number. No, one, no other person is sharing that number in this current year. Then the trimester that you enrolled in, you might find your colleague has a two, those who came earlier, that is in May. Those who came in January, it's one, and uh, the year that you enrolled in. So, uh, Different examples I can show you, the CIS, which is Computer Information Systems, BUS, it's Business Administration, CO is Counseling, BIR, International Relations, and what have you. So a number of courses have different codes that you're going to see uh, uh, with your fellow colleagues who are doing different courses. 
Then the level, we have zero, which is a diploma. Then the one, which is the middle number of, in terms of level, is the degree. Then for most of you, which is one, you are doing degree. Then there are those who are doing postgraduate diplomas. You'll see them having a bus dash two. Then masters, they usually have a three as a level and PhD is a four. Then the intake, those who came in January, they have a one stroke 2020. Those who came in May is two stroke 2020. And those who came in September is three stroke 2020. So after you have done the logging into the report, into the student portal using your assigned registration number and your password, the second thing that you should do immediately is what is called session reporting. And remember, this is now from January because uh, for September, we automatically did that for you administratively. Then from January going forward, this is what you're going to do as a continuing student. So session reporting is like the digital signing in of the nominal role, showing that you're present for a specific trimester in session. If you don't do session reporting automatically, even if you get assignments, even if you attend classes, and even if you do cuts, will not recognize you and will not be able to do anything going forward. So you're supposed to do first, the first thing that you do once you log into the system is do session reporting. Then you make payment of fees because once you do session reporting, there's an invoice that is usually raised and I'm going to show you how to check that invoice. And you're supposed to pay uh, either full fees or a required percentage. In normal situation, it's 60%. So hopefully if you resume from January or earlier, remember the payment of fees is usually 60%. But if you have the full fees, I'll encourage you guys to pay the full fees so that you don't experience any inconveniences later. Then you're required to clear the balance when you're going to sit for the exams. So you need to pay an initial percentage of fees to be able to register the courses. And if the initial fees do not meet the required threshold in terms of the percentage, automatically the system will not allow you to register the units and you'll not be able to attend classes or do exams or cuts and assignments. And it will be inconveniencing from your side. So ensure you pay the required amount that is 60% for you to be able to get proper services from the institution. We have different ways of payment. Uh, the common one is usual payment of bank through via the bank accounts. Uh, like for the government sponsored, you have a specific bank account which is in KCB. For the others, they have a myriad of bank accounts for the PSSPs. They have a, a number of accounts that they can use to deposit or you can bring a banker's check to the institution directly to the finance office. The other way, which is very convenient, you can also pay your fees via M-Pesa wherever you are. And our pay bill number is 300-112 and you use account number as your registration number. Then you wait for any transaction that you do. It doesn't reflect immediately. You usually wait for another 24 hours. After 24 hours, if it has not reflected, then that's when you can follow up using our various university contacts to follow up from the finance department so that your fees can reflect to the portal so that you're able to register. After you've done session reporting, payment of fees, the next step is registration and approval of units on offer. Remember, in your portal, you have a number of units that you're going to pursue as you pursue your career through the either three-year program, four-year program, six-year program. You're going to see all the units that you're going to cover in your coursework. But every trimester, you're supposed to do a number of courses that are placed on offer by the department. And you should you select something that is not on offer, definitely it's going to inconvenience you because you're not going to get lecturers, you're not going to attend uh, uh, courseworks, and you're not be able to do even the exams because the unit will not be on offer and it will inconvenience you in terms of time and in terms of uh, you finishing your studies on time. So once you've registered and the units have been approved by the department, you'll be an active student. So what should you do every trimester as a continuing student? So these are the basic steps that you as a continuing student from January are supposed to do. The first thing for you to be an active any student for any trimester, you need to go through the following steps in your student portal. So the first thing is you are supposed to log into your student portal. Then after that, you do what is called session reporting. Then after that, you pay your school fees, which is 60% or the complete fee. Then you register the courses on offer. And after you've registered the courses on offer, you follow by the to the you follow through the department, the COD for units to be approved. And that way you'll be an active student for that specific 
trimester. Remember, as a continuing student, this is your responsibility and it's not responsibility from our side. So should you skip any step, automatically you're going to experience difficulties in terms of accessing materials and also doing assignments and attending classes should you resume physically. So what browser should you use? Uh, a number of times uh, when you use some browsers, you might experience difficulty in accessing our systems or interacting with the system. But the most common browsers that are, will give you better experience for both desktop, laptop, phones, or tablets, you can use either Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox to access our portal, which is portal2.kemu.ac.ke. Reason being, if you use like Opera Mini, there's some interactions that you're not able to do because of them being disabled, like selecting units, registering, and also sometimes logging in. Also, there's some errors that you usually experience, like our browsers are secured using a hypertext transfer protocol secure, but a number of you may be using public, uh, public uh, spaces like cybers to access our portal. So most of the time you might be using HTTP, which is not secure. Then you might experience an error like this even when you're using your phone and you see your connection is not private. It doesn't mean that we have locked you out of the system, but it's from your side that it's not quite secure, but you can proceed, but cautiously. You just click on the advance, which is highlighted here in red. Then it will take you to another page where you'll see proceed to portal2.kemu.ac.ke. You'll click on that link. And once you click on it, you refresh the page and automatically the student portal will load without any difficulty. So your responsibility as a student going forth is one, you should not share a password at all. Because remember, like I said, session reporting attracts an invoice and an invoice is quite difficult to drop it. So should someone know your password and you want you don't want to session report for that specific trimester and it does session reporting for you automatically an invoice will be raised and any deductions will be made from that invoice and dropping them will be quite difficult so ensure you don't share your password at all number two you should always do audit of your courses and keep track of your progress get a course tracking from the, from the department should we resume physically and also get the course brochure from our university website so that you're able to know the number of courses that you're going to cover. Because remember, each course has different credit hours. Ensure you get the maximum credit hours required for that specific course so that you're able to know what is required of you to graduate or to finish a course. Because remember, you may do a number of courses even supersede the required credit hours, but you have not met the minimum requirement of doing that program that is doing the common courses, the core courses, the electives, and also the options. So if you don't meet the requirements automatically, you're not going to graduate or even clear from the institution. Also keep a physical copy of your data in terms of fees payment, transcripts, and any communication made by letters to the either office of the registrar, the department, or any other office. Ensure you open a file, and I'll encourage you as new students to open a file where you put a copy of anything that you transact with us, be it fees payment, be it transcripts and any communication made by letters. For you guys, you're going to do your exams in December, but your results are going to be coming out in uh, January. Once they're out, I'll encourage you to download that transcript and also put it in a file somewhere. That way you'll be able to keep track of what units you have covered specific in a specific trimester, and you'll also be able to be focused and not lose track of what you have covered and what you have not covered, and also know what how you're performing in various subjects. So now let's start, let us interact with the system.